Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Notebook Mysteries, Decisions, and Possibilities by Kimberly Mullins, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1, 1883 Chicago, Present Day. Emma looked at herself in the mirror as she smoothed down her white high-necked shirt into her full red split skirt and thought, Mama would have liked the new rational dress movement as it allows for a more practical and comfortable fashion. I'm probably one of the few girls who can sit down comfortably because I've never worn a corset. Though you can't really call me a girl at 18. She pulled her long platinum blonde hair into a loose bun on her head. The style emphasized her high cheekbones and the dash of freckles on her nose. She took a final moment to examine her image and swirled to check her skirt for any wrinkles. Her split skirt would be considered too short by most, showing the tops of her black high-heeled boots. She nodded at her image, approving of her clothes selection for the day. Emma didn't care about looks, though she had them. She gave a bit of an exasperated look at her bun, restraining hair that reached nearly to her waist, and acknowledged it could be hot in the summertime. A short style would be nice, she thought, but then she looked again and decided she would just have to put up with it. Tony probably wouldn't like it short. Narrator commented, Yes, Tony is still very important to Emma and very much a part of her life. They've been together since she was 16, and they have remained close. As Emma did a final examination of her clothes for any flaws, she turned away from the mirror and viewed the room around her. It was her childhood room in the boarding house where she lived with her papa and Dora. Their little family had grown over the past two years with the addition of Tim, Flan Tim Flanagan, Dora's husband. Tim and Dora had been married for a little over a year. She could still remember the wedding, how wonderful the house had felt when full of people, food, and music. Chapter 2, 1882, Tim and Dora's Wedding Mama's family had taken over the event and the house for the week. It was a wonderful, joyous time. Aunts, uncles, and children were all over the house. Emma spent months making an intricate lace wedding dress for Dora, and she looked radiant in it. It was a wedding where everyone enjoyed themselves, and no one wanted the day to end. Emma had felt Mama's spirit that day, especially when she and Dora were alone together, getting ready to head downstairs for the ceremony. With tears in her eyes, Emma helped Dora slip into her dress. They had completed a final fitting a few weeks before, but knowing Dora would be getting married today made Emma emotional. Don't make me cry, cautioned Dora, seeing Emma's eyes filled with tears. No, no, I won't, she said as she tried to shake them off. You look beautiful and so much like Mama. They hugged tightly. Enough of that now, said Dora. I have things to do today. With that final comment, both girls, looking beautiful in their lace dresses, stepped into the hallway to be greeted by Papa. Emma started downstairs with Dora and Papa following behind. The ceremony was being held in the backyard. Chairs had been set up there with an aisle separating the guests and at the far end, an arch where Tim and Dora would say their vows. Emma entered the yard first and could see Tim waiting for Dora. He didn't appear nervous. He did appear to be a bit impatient to begin his married life, she thought. On her walk down the aisle, Emma glanced at each side. Mama's family took up most of the space. Her eyes found Tony. He smiled as she walked by. Next, she saw Cole and Jeremy Tilden. Jeremy winked at her. She grinned back and had to force herself to focus on where she would stand during the wedding. The music that was played, playing was lovely. Chloe, cousin's wife, had formed a small quartet that performed at different events. Her skills as a violin player were well known. The quartet included Chloe and Lee Sandell on violin, Elspeth Hansen on viola, and Katie Yu on cello. Amy opened the back door and motioned to Chloe's group to begin playing the music for Dora and Papa's entrance. As they started down the aisle, Emma's tears started to form again, and this time she let them fall. Two of her favorite people were becoming one that day. Once the cer wedding ceremony was over, the chairs and arch were cleared out. Tables were put in their place and a dance floor was arranged. Day turned to evening with plenty of food, drink, and speeches. Papa stood by the front table with his arm around Dora. I'd like to tell you about these two people that we all love so much. Dora is so much like her mama. Both of my girls are, Papa said, including Emma in his speech. Mary would have loved to have been here to see this joyous day. I thought when she died that our family had also died, but I was wrong. Our family continued and is only stronger with the addition of Tim. 
he turned to Tim and said, Welcome to the family. The crowd cheered and Dora had her face buried in Papa's chest. It was a memory she would cherish. Papa had sent Dora and Tim on a trip to New York, but when they returned, they didn't seem to remember much of what they'd seen. They had returned well-rested, Emma thought with a laugh. She moved to her desk and sat down for a moment while reflecting on 1881, that busy year she began investigating. <laughs>